good morning. My name is William Lawson, and welcome to the Morning Report. The Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. All right. Um, today's video is going to be a little different. It might actually move into a couple or three videos. We're going to talk about the idea of people passing around petitions for things to be put not just on the ballot, but on the ballot to change the Florida state constitution. Now, normally these are items that one side or the other can't get pushed through legislatively. So what they do is they go to the people and they usually accost you at a grocery store or a uh, or the DMV and they get you to sign a petition so a certain thing can be on the ballot to change the constitution, to amend the constitution. Generally speaking, these things have worked out badly uh, or not like anybody who signed the petition thought they would. One of them was medical marijuana in Florida. People thought that if they signed this petition and it got on the ballot, people would approve medical marijuana. The only problem is that Yes, it was approved, but it still has to go through the legislature. It still has to go through the legislative process to become a law. You know what I'm saying? So putting it on the ballot as, as an initiative, it still has to go backwards through the process. And then however the, uh, the, the thing on the petition is written, that's never the law. It's never how it works out. So it would be better. It would always be better to follow the legislative process as intended. If indeed you can get enough support to do that, if you can get your candidate or whatever, enough support to do that to the legislative branch, that always works better. So my take on these <clears throat> uh, amendments that get put onto the constitution of the state of Florida is to always, when you see them on your ballot, to vote no. That is my default status. So in this, so in this video, or this series of video, we're going to talk about first of all how this happens. There's there's two ways that um, constitutional amendments end up on your ballot. Uh, we're going to talk about that first, and then we're going to talk about the ones that are on your ballot for 2024, and some of the some of the ones that will be on your ballot that may be on your ballot in 2026. Hope you enjoy the video. I uh, ho hope that you get some, some use out of it. And if you get any use out of it, please subscribe, <clears throat> comment, share with your friends, share with your enemies. It'll all be cool. Go to our website, www.fightbackmedia.com, www.fightbackmedia.com. And if you feel so inclined, get some of our Fightback Media gear or just donate to the, the cause because this takes a little time to put together. And we, we appreciate any of your help. All right, <clears throat> let's get into it. All right, again, there are two ways to get <clears throat> an uh, constitutional amendment on the ballot. The first way is a legislatively referred constitutional amendment. Now, uh, le legislatures are required to seek voter approval to amend the state constitution um, in actually 49 of 50 states. Delaware is one of those states where voter approval is not required. Joe Biden's Delaware. Uh, the legislative rules and procedures for changing constitutions through uh, referred ballot measures, of course, differ from state to state. Uh, and and all that all that really means is that the legislature comes up with uh, they come up with some some ballot initiatives to, to put on the ballot. Now, these ballot initiatives in, say, in the state of Florida have to be approved. They firstly have to be approved. Um, to get on the ballot. There are going to be four of the legislatively referred uh, constitutional amendments on the Florida ballot for, for, for 2024. Uh, that's the first one is the partisan school board election amendment. Now we're gonna get into the meat of, of, of some of these am of amendments uh, a little later in the video. So hang on, stay tuned. Uh, and the second one is the Florida right to hunt and fish. Amendment. The third is the annual 
uh, inflation adjustment for homestead property tax exemption and value amendment. And the uh, other one is the Florida repeal, uh, repeal of public financing for statewide campaigns amendments. Now, here's how this has to work. Um, in the Senate, each of these amendments to go to the ballot have to have 24 votes. 24 votes. Um, and in the House, they have to have 72 votes. Now, the Florida uh, legislature is Republican dominated. Republican dominated. Um, so none of these that you see here are going, that are legislatively referred um ballot initiatives to amend the constitution were pushed through by democrats not one not one uh republicans for the um school the partisan school board thing ha already had 28 votes uh 28 votes uh in in, in the senate for the florida right, right to hunt and fish amendment uh 25 uh republican votes uh for the uh annual adjustment for homestead property tax exemption amendment uh 27 votes for the photo repeal of financial statewide campaigns amendment. So in the Senate, this was a done deal. These were going on the ballot. And in the same order, 79, 81, 81, and 81 for the uh for Republicans. No, none of these, none of these were pushed through by Democrats. So I want I want to make sure that everybody understands what's happening here. Make sure everybody understands what's happening. Again, I told you my default status. My default status, no matter what, is to say no. If you don't, especially if you don't know exactly what's going on here, just say no. Now, again, we're going to do a deeper dive in each of each of these amendments as the video goes on, so you will be able to understand. And then you you may disagree with me. Uh, some of them you might be down with, and that's fine because you know the best thing about your choice, your choice. Uh, that's the best thing about your freedom is your freedom. So uh, we're going to continue on. And now we're going to start getting into the nuts and bolts of each of these amendments. We're going to start getting into the nuts and bolts of each of these amendments, uh, starting with the first one, uh, which is, I'll make sure that I get on the right screen because that's going to be really important. Now, there are some hot button ones for sure. There's some hot button ones. And we're going to get to that too. Okay, Florida Amendment Number One. This is this is the first one that you're going to see on your ballot. It is ha having to do with partisan school board elections. Now, where we live, school board elections are nonpartisan, right? Right, nonpartisan. Okay, so I so so to clarify this because this is how they get you to clarify this. A yes vote supports making school board elections partisan beginning in November of 2026. General elections and primary uh, and, and for primary elections, nominating party candidates for the 2026 elections. A no vote opposes making school board elections partisan, thereby maintaining current procedures where school board members are elected in a nonpartisan election. Okay. A yes vote supports making school board elections partisan. So what you'll see is, first of all, there's a nominating process. So if someone's running for uh, District 1, Republicans, can, Republicans or Socialists or Libertarians or Democrats or Socialists or Communist Party can, can put forth a school board candidate. Now, it does add to a bit of the transparency, doesn't it? Okay. And what they, they can do then is each of those can nominate a, a person for the general election and then they, and then they go at it. Uh, a supermajority uh, in Florida is required. That 60% of the electorate uh, is required to approve an amendment. Okay. 60%. Uh, the, uh, the 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 Florida gambling, I think, for a a couple of a couple of three elections in a row, missed missed the uh, the supermajority by I don't know uh, a percent or two percent until they just kept pushing it, 
until eventually it passed. All right. Again, we're, we're doing this deep dive into Florida Amendment. Uh, one, the partisan school board election amendment. Uh, let's see if we can get where's my mouse. There it is. Uh, so here's what Amendment 1 would change about school board elections in Florida. Amendment 1 would make school board elections partisan beginning in 2026. I've said that. Candidates would be nominated for the general election through partisan primaries. So you would have more people on the August on the August primary running for school board. Because normally school board, you run for school board, you just go right to the general, right? Because if you qualify, you, you go right to the general. Um, but now you would be you'd be stopped and you'd have to win a primary. Okay. You'd have to win the Republican primary. Now, if no Republicans run, obviously you win. Or if no Democrats will run, you win. And then you're off to the general election, right? Uh, Florida has been a partisan school board, excuse me, Florida had partisan school board elections until voters approved Amendment 11, which prohibited party labels in school board elections in 1998. So it hasn't always been this way. I think we have to always get over the whole idea that it's, well, it's always been this way. It has not always been this way. Um, it was referred uh, to the ballot by the Florida Constitutional Revision Commission. It came in through the legislature. School board members in Florida are elected by the voters of the county and serve four-year terms. The school board controls, of course, school property, uh, establishes, organizes, and operates the schools of the district, including establishing schools, adopting uh, enrollment plans, uh, providing for school eliminations and consolidations, co cooperating with school boards and adjoining districts and maintaining schools, maintaining the, the school year calendar and other duties as outlawed, excuse me, as outlined by federal law. Now, you'll say that, so what states have partisan school board elections? Well, as of 2024, Florida was one of the 41 states with laws providing for nonpartisan school board elections. Four states, Alabama, Connecticut, Louisiana, and Pennsylvania, have state laws providing for partisan school board elections. Five states, Rhode Island, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, provide for partisan or nonpartisan uh, elections depending on the district. The state laws of 41 states include uh, 11,761 school districts pr provide for school board elections without party labels identifying the affiliation of candidates listed on the ballot. At, so they have nonpartisan elections. So right now, Florida is in the majority and is seeking and is seeking to move to the minority in this particular thing. I could tell you what uh, um, your state legislature uh, person, your state legislator says about it, but I'm not going to. That's up to you. Call them. Call them. Go to their website. See what they say about it. See if you agree. My default position on all the amendments, even the ones that seem to make sense, because what you see what you see on the on the ballot is not the law. The law still has to be written. So you can read that and you can understand that. But that doesn't mean that's that's what it's going to be. Okay? That doesn't mean what, what that's going to be. Now, I told you back before in the video that the Florida legislature is run by Republicans. So uh, in this particular instance, because this was a legislatively referred constitutional amendment, an LRCA, uh, there there is a lot of Republican support. Joe Gruders and Tyler Siros and Spencer Roach are are officially supporting um, this particular amendment. Now, of course, there are the others, uh, Angela Nixon, a Democrat, and Bobby Powell junior a democrat uh, or state senators of course are opposing it right we don't have numbers yet on the money that's being put forth in support 
and opposition of this particular bill. But this is the first thing. Now we're off to the second. Okay, the second Florida amendment is a court is another uh, legislatively referred constitutional amendment. It is the right to hunt and fish amendment. Sounds good. A yes vote supports establishing a constitutional right to hunt and fish in Florida. A no vote opposes establishing a constitutional right to hunt and fish. Remember what I said. I said that sometimes these are set are set up or are uh, promoted as things that seem common sense. It it will require a supermajority, a sixty percent supermajority uh, of the electorate uh, to approve this amendment. Now let's talk about this amendment. What would the amendment do? The ballot measure will provide a state constitutional right to hunt and fish and declare that hunting and fishing are the preferred means for responsibly managing and controlling fish and wildlife and shall be preserved forever. Unless there's another constitutional amendment that repeals it. Uh, uh, the amendment would not, although the, 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 the amendment would not limit the Fish and Water Conservation Commission constitutional powers under Article 4, Section 9. So the Florida uh, Fish and Wildlife Commission isn't going away. That bit of bureaucracy will stay in place and wouldn't limit anything that they, that they do. But now you would have a, con a Florida state constitutional right to hunt and fish. Now, how is that going to change seasons and uh, who knows? Remember what I told you? All that is can be written on the back end. So what supporters and opponents, I, I, I'm, I'm, here, here's what some people are saying, vote yes on two. It's leading the campaign in support of the amendment. Uh, yes on two said, hunting and fishing bans were considered in, the, in at least a dozen states in 2020, in 2022. So far, 23 states have passed constitutional right to hunt and fish amendments. Florida is not yet one of those states. Amendment 2 definitely protects our right to hunt and fish in the state of Florida, while bans were considered in at least a dozen states last year, including a push to criminalize hunting, fishing, and farming. Amendment 2 will prevent extremists from taking away our rights. People who say no. Uh... They believe that this is a, a, a leading the campaign in opposition to measure to the measure. That's no to two. Uh, notice who said the amendment is a threat to wildlife and that even though the planet has lost 69 percent of its wildlife over the past 50 years, this amendment would create a fundamental right in the Florida Constitution to hunt and fish using traditional methods, guns and fishing poles. Uh, the, the group also says that this is ill-advised amendment could be used to override protections for fish stocks as effectively nullifying the, the prohibition of gill nets that are on the wall of death in the sea. Now, yes, you're right. You heard me. Um, this does. This will not stop anything from the uh, Florida F Fish and Wildlife Commission uh, from going forward. So why are they why are they doing this? Hmm. That's a good that's that's a that, that's that's a good question. My default position is what? You're right. My default position is no. And you can go to Ballotpedia. Ballotpedia, one word, B A L L O T P E D I A dot org, and you can type in Florida ballot initiatives. And you can see all the constitutional changes. You can see all this for yourself. And my and, and my my hope is that you would do just that. My hope is that in this video that would it would it would you would think, yeah, that's what I need to do. Because you see them on the ballot and and we all have our you know our Christmas tree thing. We'll go yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And then we 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 move on like we've done something good when you've done something bad because you just randomly, uh, you, 
you, you'd be randomly changing your life or randomly changing the life of the people around you without really looking into it. That's what the video is all about. Now, the third um, ballot initiative is a different kind of ballot initiative. We'll talk about that in a second. The third um, ballot initiative is what they call a citizen-initiated ballot measure. Okay, a CIBA or BM or whatever it is BM. That's fantastic. Um, that's the ones where if you if if anybody who lives in Florida, especially now, this may happen in other states. As a matter of fact, it happens in eighteen other states. Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Florida, uh, Illinois, uh, Nebraska, Montana, Missouri, Mississippi, Michigan, Massachusetts, South Dakota, Oregon, uh, Oklahoma, Ohio, North Carolina, excuse me, North Dakota, and Nevada have citizens initiated constitutional amendments, I mean, constitutional, constitutional amendments, CICAs. They can be direct or indirect. Of the 18 states that provide for initiated constitutional amendments, these measures are, are, are direct in 16 states and indirect in two states, Massachusetts and Mississippi. Uh, while direct initiative goes to voters, an indirect initiative goes to the state legislature, which can take various actions on proposals before the voters. You can read more about that later. Now, we'll talk about more about that later. Now, Mississippi, Mississippi, a little different. Mississippi has initiated a constitutional amendment process, including a signature distribution requirement based on five congressional districts. However, the requirements cannot be cannot be met according to the Mississippi Supreme Court because the state has four congressional districts uh, following re reapportionment in two thousand one. It it was like like I keep saying, you know, the, you know, the person who gets paid a dollar for each signed petition. Is going to present something to you that may not be the fact when it gets to the end of the process. In Mississippi, they can't even do it because when they started um, this, they had five districts, but now they only have four. Anyway, so when they come to you at the DMV or at Publix or wherever you are and say, "You want to sign?" An amendment to, uh, uh, you know, a petition to increase the minimum wage. I always say no. Why? Because I'm going to say it again. Because now you have to go backwards through for, whether you whether you agree with the with a thought or not. They got to go backwards through the process. It's better to call. I mean, if you're fired up about uh, minimum wage, it's better. No, I don't know why you would be, but if you're fired up about that, then it would be better to call up your local con Congress critter and get in their ear and get up their butt about it and then see if you can, if you can find enough support to get a bill and get a bill passed through the regular means. Right? Don't you think that's better? Yeah, I think that's better. Um, now, the and this is and this amendment, the third amendment, uh, is a really important one. Florida Amendment 3, the one you've been waiting on, is Marijuana Legalization Initiative. A yes vote supports the legalizing of marijuana for adults 21 years and older and allowing individuals to possess up to three ounces of marijuana. A no vote opposes legalizing marijuana for adult use in Florida. It will require a supermajority of sixty percent uh, for this to to become an amendment. Now, it won't become an amendment the night it gets approved. So, because here's what here's what here's what will happen. So, let's say it gets approved. It gets approved. The potheads will have a smoke out that night because that's how they think things work. But it doesn't. This will still have to go through a legislative review and process still before the law is actually written. And the law that gets written may not be anything like the ballot initiative. I'm just telling you how it works. I know that makes you angry, but that but that's how it works. Right? All the usual suspects are supporting and opposing the initiative. 
Okay. And they've been pushing this for a while. That's the deal. Here's what the initiative would do. The initiative would legalize recreational marijuana for adults, 21 years and older. Individuals be allowed, will be allowed to possess up to three ounces of marijuana, or about 85 grams, uh, with, up, uh, with up to five grams in the form of concentrate. Existing medical marijuana treatment centers will be authorized on the initiative to sell marijuana to adults for personal use. So True, True Leave and these other um, dispensaries that are that you see that people got, frankly, I'm going to be honest with you, got fooled into thinking, this is just for sick people. And for other people who said, this is the open door for the legalization of marijuana. Well, it's just like, I'll, I'm not, I'm not, we're not getting into that conversation here. We're not in this video. We're not. But it's exactly what we told you. Mar Miracle marijuana, marijuana was adopted by four voters in 2016 by a vote of 71% to 29%. It is a citizen constitutional amendment. My default position on all of these is no. All right. The next uh, amendment, amendment four, is also uh, from a citizen's initiative. Uh, for, uh, amendment four is the right to abortion initiative. Yes, supports establishing a constitutional right to abortion before fetal viability. You heard me. A no opposes establishing a constitutional right to abortion before fetal, vi fetal viability. Yeah, terms that we could fight about, right? Fetal viability. It will, it will require a supermajority. A 60% majority vote is required for the approval of the amendment. Now, Here's some additional information here. As of July 10th, 2024, six, six statewide ballot measures relating to abortion were certified for the ballot for 2024. Six. This is the one that came out. Here's what the initiative would do. The initiative would provide a constitutional right to abortion before fetal viability, estimated to be around 24 weeks or when necessary to protect the patient's health as determined by the patient's health care provider. The following language would be added to the state constitution. Except as provided in Article 10, Section 22, no law shall prohibit, penalize, delay, or restrict abortion before viability or when necessary uh, to protect the patient's health as determined by the patient's health care provider. The initiative would not change the state legislature's authority to enact a law requiring the patient of a minor, uh, excuse me, the parent of a minor to be notified if their child is seeking an abortion with the exception that can be attained through a judicial waiver. So if the 14 year old uh, gets somebody to help them go to the court to keep this information from their parents, then that can still happen. There you go. Now, what you need to do, what you what you need to do, is go to ballot ballotpedia. Ballotpedia has some very very good information. Again, ballot, ballot ballotpedia.org. I'm going to try to write it down there and underneath there, if I can remember to do it in the editing. Uh, it's, it's it's important that you get the, the information. Who's behind this? Because all these citizen initiatives, there's somebody behind it. It isn't like, oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll I'll, I'll get some petitions. Because somebody is paying these people a dollar a position, that money is coming from somewhere. Now, what we don't—I I don't think we have. I'm, I'm going to look and see if we have. Uh, yes, check out the money. What 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 do we always say? Follow the money. <sighs> 
the cash and in-kind contributions, the total contributions, and the total expenditures for this particular initiative in support total contributions 29 million 174,838 dollars and 43 cents of, of cash contributions total contributions 32 million uh, 258,867 uh, dollars and 65 cents. That's in support of a constitutional right to, uh, to abortion here in Florida. The opposition, less than, or just a little bit more than a half million dollars. Hmm. We'll do a deeper dive into this one for sure. We'll do a deeper dive into this one for sure. But that's what's going on here. And we'll do, do a deeper dive into who's supporting this and where the, and where the money's coming from because it's, again, follow the doggone money. All right. Let's go ahead and go to Amendment 5. Amendment 5 is the annual inflation adjustment for homestead property tax exemption value amendment. A yes vote supports an annual inflation adjustment to the amount of assessed value that is exempt from property taxation. A no vote opposes an annual inflation adjustment uh, to the annual assessed value that is exempt from property tax taxation. That means that if you're a, you're a homeowner and most of you are homeowners, uh, you get whatever your assessed value is, they knock off $25,000 from that, right? And you're, and you're assessed, your property tax is assessed on the value minus $20, $25,000. Now, the problem is like we are in times like we are in where inflation is causing everything to be more expensive even the part that you are taxed on after the $25,000 deduction, paying that money is still tough. So they're, they're proposing, and this one is a uh, legislatively referred constitutional amendment. You wanna know where it came from? It's a legislatively referred constitutional amendment. This is not a citizen initiative will require a supermajority of 60%. Here's what Amendment 5 uh, would do. As of 2024, in Florida, property tax or millage rates were set by counties, school districts, cities, special districts. Homes in Florida are assessed at market value, minus the homestead exemption, which is what I just said. The homestead exemption reduces the taxable value of, of a property. Every property, uh, excuse me, every primary resident is eligible for a $25,000 home, homestead exemption, which exempts that amount from all taxes. Another $25,000 homestead exemption is applied on a homestead value between $50,000 and $75,000, which is exempt, which exempts that amount from all taxes except for school district taxes. The amendment would provide an additional inflation adjustment for the value of the homestead property um, tax exemption that applies to non-school taxes. The adjustment would be made every year on January 1st based on the percentage change in the consumer price index reported by the U.S. Department of Labor if the change is positive, if the thing goes up. If the if the uh, the price index goes up, then you get a you get an adjustment. So your taxes should meet that adjustment. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. So how did again? How did Amendment Five get on the ballot? Again, it got put on the ballot um, due to a legislatively referred constitutional amendment. A sixty percent vote is still required 
in both the Senate and the House of Representatives, 40 on the ballot. The amendment was approved by the Florida House back in February with 86 representatives voting in favor and 29 voting against among, among Democrats. Five were in favor, 29 were opposed among the House Republicans, 81 were in favor, none were opposed. The amendment was approved in the Florida Senate uh, on March 6, 2024, at, by a vote of 25 to 15. Uh, Senate Republicans, 25, were in favor. Uh, three were opposed. All 12 uh, Senate Democrats were uh, in, in opposition of this measure. Again, will this final law look like the ballot initiative? No, none of them ever have. All right, number five. Was it number five? No, on, on the number six. Uh, Florida Amendment 6 is a repeal of public financing for statewide campaigns. A yes vote supports repealing the state constitutional provision that provides for public financing of campaigns for those running for elective statewide offices who agree to campaign spending limits. So in Florida, you can get some funding from the state if you say, hey, listen, we're just not going to spend and spend and spend. These we're going to go by these limits. Do people do that? Only if you have zero choice. Only if you have zero choice. Um, a no vote opposes repealing the constitutional provision that allows for public uh, financing uh, or uh, of campaigns. Therefore, continuing to allow public campaign financing for statewide candidates who agree to certain spending limits. A no vote says, no, keep it as it is. If people need money from the state to campaign, then and if they agree to these limits, we're going to keep we're going to keep providing that money to them. Now, normally these people have no shot of winning. Because campaigning is super expensive and the blood of campaigns is money. I know that personal experience. A supermajority is required from the from the votes from the voters in, in November to pass this particular amendment. Here's what it would do. The amendment would repeal Section 7, Article 6 of the Florida Constitution, which provides for public campaign financing for statewide candidates who agree to spending limits. Currently, under Article 6, public campaign financing is available for candidates for the offices of governor, attorney general, chief financial officer, and the commissioner of agriculture. Public financing in Florida is available for candidates for the offices of, again, of governor and selected cabinet members, attorney general, uh, chief financial officer, commissioner of agriculture. Okay. Uh, for public campaign financing, a candidate must not be running unopposed, must agree to expenditure limits. You still have to raise $150,000 for gubernatorial candidates and $100,000 for, uh, for, for cabinet candidates. But you still gotta, if you're running for governor, you still gotta find a way to get 150 grand up. And most of those people just write the check themselves. The same thing with the other cabinet uh, officers. You have to raise $100,000. Loan limits or contributions from the candidate's personal funds to $25,000 limit contributions from political parties to $250,000. And Report campaign financing data to the Division of Elections and submit, and submit a post-election financial audit. The public campaign financing program is funded by the, by the General Revenue Fund. In 2022, this expenditure limit for gubernatorial candidates receiving public campaign financing was $30.29, no, excuse me, $30.29 million. That's two dollars per registered voter, and the limit uh, for cabinet uh, candidates was uh, fifteen point one four million dollars. That's a that's a dollar for per registered voter. Here's the deal: the people who are using who, who, are, who are taking this money aren't. I hate to say aren't serious candidates, but don't really have a chance to win. 
because no one's going to agree to spending limits. They're not. They're not going to be able to raise 150 grand or 100 grand and then agree to spending limits. They're not. Again, you can go to Ballopedia, ballopedia.org, and you can read the rest of it. You can read the ballot initiatives and who's supporting this and who isn't supporting it. Right now, we don't have we don't have any campaign finances uh, information to see who is actually you know spending the money to oppose or or uh, or push it through. All right, it's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. So those are all those are the six right there. My default status is to say. My default is that is to say, hell no. Because we're not really going to get what the, it says. Because it has to go back through the process. Remember, Amendment 1, 2, 5, and 6 are legislatively referred constitutional amendments. Only two, excuse me, only three and four or citizen-initiated constitutional amendments. When we get back, I'm going to talk about what we can look forward to in 2026 from the um, citizen-initiated constitutional amendments. We're just going to read down the list. We're not going to talk about them. We're going to make you look into it and make you think about the chaos that's coming. All right, here's what we have to look forward to in, in 2026. Now, the, these are proposals that are initiatives that are out there. And some of the sponsors are Florida Decides Healthcare, uh, Right the Vision PC, Florida for Redeemable People. They have one, two, three, four, five, six ballot initiatives in the works. Let Florida vote, Team Florida. Florida, uh, what's that? Florida right to clean water. The Disney Defenders, <laughs> they have two. Team Florida, again, has, has another one out there. And again, the seventh one from the Florida for Redeemable People and a third one from the Disney Defenders. So all of these, quote, citizen initiative constitutional amendments are from groups, are from lobbying groups. Uh I guess you and I could get together and go, hey, listen, why don't we put this together and 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 get the and get the thing approved? And but the first thing they would ask was, well, who's your organization? Uh, Willie and and and, and Ted. <laughs> That's not how it works. So we get fooled by these citizen initiatives. They're not, and the people who are out collecting collecting petitions are paid people who get paid a dollar or so, maybe with inflation, maybe more, to get signatures on petitions. These aren't people who are behind the uh, behind the initiative and they couldn't care less. They want you to sign the petition so they can make a make a buck. Here are here are some of the titles. You ready? Medicaid expansion initiative, not surprising, prayer in schools initiative, executive clemency uh, initiative. Uh, extended legislative sessions. That's interesting. They want the, the, the legislative session to go from 60 days to 300 days. Do you want? I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> required jury recommendations on mandatory sentencing sought uh, by state initiative. Prohibit mandatory sentencing initiatives. Uh, the required voters on bills from both chambers before the end of legislative sessions. So if it requires that, that all the bills filed be voted on before either session uh, is allowed to end their legislative sessions. Okay. Offender uh, re uh, reintegration programs um, have, having to do with prisons. Uh, top two open primaries for state offices. Creates a top two open primary system. 
this is all these are all these citizen initiatives that are coming down the pike uh the right to clean water uh initiative uh require voter approval to dissolve a county municipality district department or um <laughs> or, or or agency initiative now this now this one is from the disney defenders this keeps this uh, would keep governor desantis from going into the reedy creek uh district and saying that doesn't exist anymore it should have never existed it doesn't exist anymore anyway um, and again, the Reedy Creek Improvement District, it establish it reestablishes it. Again, this is not a citizen initiative. Citizen, most 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 citizens couldn't care two rips about the Reedy Creek Initiative or or the, or the Improvement District. This is a Disney backdoor to get the governor. The Voting Rights Initiative. Uh, and again, provide that the right to vote shall not be abridged. So check this out on on account of race, ethnicity, religion, language, education, gender, sexual orientation, because we've been keeping the queers from voting in Florida for years. Oh, you're still here. Uh, um, Criminal conviction, conviction or or sentence, incarceration or legal financial obligation. These folks have already gotten f felons to be able to vote. The problem was, is that and the as the law got written as it went back that way, if you hadn't paid all your fees, you couldn't vote. So instead of trying to find a way to get people to get their fees paid, this is their ballot initiative from the Florida for Redeemable People. These are not citizen initiatives. Define and prohibit political retaliation. Again, this is from the Disney Defenders because they, they believe that the governor politically retaliated against them. This is These are not which is why my default position on citizen initiatives and all this ballot stuff, my default position is no. My default position is absolutely not. Say no on all of them, especially the citizen initiative. All right, there you have it. Now we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So I, I hope this was helpful to you. If it was helpful, please comment, please subscribe, please share. Um, let me know if, there, if you have any questions. Again, Ballopedia, B-A-L-L-O-T-P-E-D-I-A dot org. Find out, the inform find out the information. Now, just because my default status on these is no, doesn't mean that that has to be your default status. So you know the best thing about your freedom? Your freedom. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something love somebody. And for goodness sake, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.